Welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today, we are going to talk about short field takeoff and landing. Firstly, let's talk about the definition of short field takeoff and landing. The meaning of short field takeoff and landing is to safely take off and land with minimal runway distance. We learn this in case the airport that we're going to has a shorter than usual runway or on either side of the runway threshold has some tall obstacles, such as trees or buildings. We can adopt this technique to ensure the safe operation of the flight. That is because, when we are using this technique, the takeoff and landing distance will be minimized, and the angle of climb will be maximized to ensure obstacle clearance. But under what kind of circumstances are we required to apply this kind of technique in real world flying? Firstly, when a takeoff and landing distance is very close to the actual distance of the runway, then we have to apply this technique to maximize the safety margin to avoid runway excursion. Secondly, when the aircraft's performance is reduced due to the atmospheric condition, to a point where it gets close to the obstacles along the way. This can happen when the air temperature is higher and the air pressure is lower. The performance of the engine and the airframe would be reduced. Using this technique, we can maximize the climb out angle to ensure obstacle clearance. The takeoff distance required for an aircraft to take off safely relies on many factors, such as air temperature, air pressure, the aircraft's weight, and the wind direction. To find out the exact distance required, we have to refer to the takeoff distance performance chart and calculate the exact runway distance requirement for the aircraft to take off safely. To determine whether the short field takeoff and landing technique is required for the operation. When operating on a shorter runway, the safety margin will be reduced. Therefore, being more aware of what are the factors that will reduce the aircraft performance is essential. Firstly, air pressure. When the air pressure drops, the aircraft will accelerate slower and climb at a shallower angle and will require more runway to take off, reducing the overall performance. Secondly, when the air temperature is higher, the aircraft would require more runway to take off. The effect of the increase in temperature is very similar to the decrease in pressure, as they are inversely proportional. Thirdly, the weight of the aircraft. When the aircraft is heavier, it takes longer to accelerate to the rotation speed, thus requiring more runway to take off. It will also reduce the climb angle. In addition, the surface of the runway. In general, the smoother the runway surface is, the less distance it takes for the aircraft to take off and land. Not only that, the slope of the runway would help reduce the distance. In an ideal scenario, taking off downhill and landing uphill would provide the best performance. Last but not least is the wind direction. In a short field takeoff and landing operations, always take off and land into the wind to reduce the distance required on the runway. It can also increase the angle of climb and avoid collision with obstacles. After understanding the factors that affect the performance of the aircraft, now, let's have a look into how to conduct short field operation on an actual flight. The first difference between a short field operation and a normal operation is the radial call to be conducted at a holding point. As well as the normal radial call, we're going to add request 1 0 seconds delay at the end of the call. Reason being is we require more time on the runway before initiating the takeoff. When lining up on the runway, utilize the entire length of the runway. When the aircraft is lined up with the center line, apply brakes, then come to a full stop. At the same time, slowly apply full power. As the aircraft has full power applied, apply more brakes as required to keep the aircraft stationary. At the same time, Check the engine RPM is at about 2700 RPM and the oil temperature and pressure are in a green range to confirm the engine is operative. After ensuring that the engine is working normally, release the brakes and allow the aircraft to accelerate at the maximum rate. At the same time, apply rudder to maintain centerline. As the aircraft is accelerating, slowly apply a bit of back pressure to raise the nose off the ground. At 59 knots, apply more back pressure to rotate. When the aircraft is airborne, raise the nose attitude more to the best angle of climb to climb out at the maximum angle. The best angle of climb attitude is when the horizon is four fingers below the dashboard. 
When the aircraft is climbing out at the best angle of climb, this can ensure maximum obstacle clearance. After ensuring clearance with all the tall obstacles on the initial climb out, we can now resume to a best rate of climb attitude, just like a normal circuit. When conducting the best angle of climb, the climb speed should be at 70 knots. Whereas when best rate of climb is resumed, lower the nose attitude a little and allow the aircraft to accelerate to 80 knots. When the aircraft reaches 300 feet, conduct the after takeoff checks and continue with the upwind, crosswind, downwind, and base leg. The procedure is exactly the same as a normal circuit. Until the final leg of the circuit, this would be the start of the short field landing technique. In the approach phase of a short field landing, the approach work cycle, aim point, aspect, airspeed would still have to be done. However, there are some adjustments for this particular approach. Aim point will no longer be the second center line, but the start of the runway. In this way, we can maximize the entire length of the runway to reduce the risk of runway overrun. Aspect would be the same as a normal approach. The shape of the runway should not be too wide or too narrow and not changing in shape, but only enlarging in size. Airspeed, from mid-final onwards, slow down to 65 knots, which is five knots slower than a normal approach. When the airspeed is slowed down to 65 knots, more drag will be produced and more power is required to maintain the reduced airspeed. Interestingly, more power is required to fly slower. When the aircraft is approaching at a slower speed, it will be more unstable. Hence, precise throttle control is essential to control a slower approach speed. And also because of the slower approach speed, the nose attitude has to be higher to maintain a correct rate of descent. The nose attitude will be two fingers on the top of the dashboard. It is very similar to a flapless approach. When the aircraft has passed the threshold, start to bring the throttle lever to the idle position. Due to the lower airspeed on approach, the rate of descent will be higher. As a pilot, you may feel the aircraft sink more prominently. Apply back pressure to raise the nose attitude as required to stop the sink to allow the aircraft to land in a safe manner. We can expect the aircraft touchdown to be firmer than usual. And once the aircraft has touched down, use rudder to maintain center line. Apply a bit of brake to start with and slowly increase the brake pressure as the aircraft is decelerating. At the same time, start to apply back pressure as it can increase the aerodynamic drag to help to slow the aircraft down and also produce more downforce to increase the contact between the tyres and the ground to allow the tyres to break harder. As the aircraft is slowing down more, gradually apply more back pressure and brakes to come to a full stop. During the approach phase of a short field landing, if the airspeed could not be maintained at 65 knots, the aircraft is too unstable, or the aim point could not be maintained properly, please conduct a go around and try again on the next attempt. Short field takeoff and landing demonstrations. Firstly, feed on the brakes and apply full power. Do not let the aircraft move. Now, confirm T's and P's in the green RPM is good, brakes off. Use rudder to maintain center line. T's and P's in the green RPM is good, airspeed is live. Start to apply a bit of back pressure. Lift off. Start to climb out at best angle of climb. 300 feet, flaps up, fuel pump off, letting lights off. After that, we can proceed to a normal circuit. And this is a short field takeoff demonstration. When conducting a short field landing, the procedure on downwind and base is mostly the same as a normal circuit. The difference starts on final. Right, center, center, left. Make sure it's all clear before we turn onto final. Sp speed check, flaps down. We have to establish on final not below 500 feet. Final check, pitch, undercarriage fixed. Fuel pump on, landing flaps. On final at 500 feet, 70 knots. Maintain 70 knots from early final, like a normal approach. At about 300 feet, start to reduce power to slow down to 65 knots.
Aim point is two fingers on a piano key. Touchdown point is the second center line. Air spec is the same. Air speed don't go slower than 65 knot. Bit of crosswind from the left. So use the crosswind technique. Right rudder, left aileron, and flare. After landing, ease in on the brakes. At the same time, apply more back pressure. When the speed is slow enough, vacate the runway. What I need to emphasize is right after touchdown, do not let go of the stick. Maintain directional control of rudder and apply back pressure to increase the downforce to have better braking performance. In this lesson, short field takeoff and landing, what are some of the threats and areas that we have to consider before jumping on a plane and conducting it? During a short field landing, because of the reduced approach speed, the aircraft will be more unstable during approach. Aim point and airspeed maintenance will be harder, therefore a higher risk of deviations. When that happens, please bear in mind to conduct a go around. That is also why during gusty and strong wind condition, Practicing short field takeoff and landing is not recommended. The other threat happens during the initial climb out, when the aircraft has just rotated and is pitching up and accelerating to the best angle of climb. The best angle of climb has the steepest pitch up attitude, but if the pitch angle is too high, a stall could occur at low altitude. And that is why during the rotation and the initial climb out, we have to fly visually to verify the climb out pitch up attitude is not too high. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn to Fly YouTube channel for more great content and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.